President Dakins. We need y'all to start us off. My Uncle Hayward, come on up. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. We're going to get ready to start off with the vote, sir. We'd like y'all joining with us. Good to be invited down here. I don't know about y'all. I might be a little bit too full, but I'm going to give you what I got. So y'all want to give a hand clap, sing with us, go along, sing with old familiar hymn, Won't It Be Grand? I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand?
If thou shalt draw thyself to me, Lord, where shall we go? It's again and again, Heavenly Father. It's a few of your believing children have simply between these old folk concentrated walls one more time. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our line down last night. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the angels stood up around our bedside watched over us all night long while we sometimes slowly slept and then early early this morning you touched us with a true finger look woke us up on due time and not only that heaven that when you woke us up we was able to get up stand up on our own two legs and they didn't give away on us. That's just enough to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for life as well as health and strength. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me another opportunity to bow down and call upon your holy rich name. Oh, Lord, that is your will this evening. Let your holy well, upon the a little while, for oh, we need you, Lord. We pray, Father, that, that you bless this church and the under shepherd of this church. We pray, Father, that you bless this usher right now, Father, and give them many, many more. Oh, Lord, I'm not calling you this morning because I can't. I call you because I need you. Realize that Heavenly Father, some of us need you for one day, and Lord, some of us need you for another. But we realize, Heavenly Father, you have got enough medicine in the hem of your garment to kill us all. Now, Lord, now, now, Lord, remember the man this evening and break the bread of life to us. Let him say something, Father. Did somebody I cry, I yield, I yield, I can't hold on no longer. Oh, no. Call me this evening, Father. Because ye realize that you are our Father and we are your children. And you told us, Father, with the devil, we need we can call upon you and then Father call you truly and sincerely upon the heart you will hear and read and suppress ever been a needed time I feel right now Lord we need you right now somebody is sick this evening somebody is homeless this evening somebody don't know you from the free Somebody try me to come on back home. Oh, Lord, we need an independent on you. 
you, Jesus. But we realize, Heavenly Father, you got all power in your hand. And we realize, Heavenly Father, you say, go your way, girl. All hurts and that will pass away. And now, Lord, now, now, Lord, we realize, Heavenly Father, how many is truly winding up. In one of these old days, Lord, we got to go in old dark room. It ain't gonna come out no more. And then, Heavenly Father, when it's no time to call, and I was time to ask you, we pray, Father, for home somewhere in that place where I can praise that name. That's all these blessings in that son Jesus' name of Christ's sake. Amen. Good afternoon. I'm no trolls in our way. But I know a man that's going to fix it. And his name is Jesus Christ. A trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, so much trouble. Yeah. I have to cry sometimes. A little weak at night, sure. Oh, that's alright. Cause I know Jesus is. After a while, a trouble in my way. I have to cry. Yeah. 
for another day that you have made, Lord. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Lord, I want to thank you for my last night laying down in my early morning rising, Lord. Lord, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And I just want to say thank you. Lord, thank you for the urgent today, Lord. Don't they look good? Just say thank you, Lord. Just all my blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.
to thank those deacons for that wonderful devotion. And you know, I, I just have to say, it does my heart good to see that young man talking about trouble in my way. But he knows that Jesus will fix it. And what stands in the back of my mind about that young man is, is he was in our Sunday school class years and years ago. And it just goes to show, if you start them off the right way, if you start them off the right way, it's not that trouble won't come, but they sure gonna know who gonna be there to fix it. So again, we'd like to thank those awesome deacons for uh, that part of our program. Um, I guess I started without even introducing myself. To those of you who don't know me, I am Janine Rogers. I am a member here at Barber's Creek. I thank Tabernacle for coming along with other churches. I heard a deacon praying, Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to come in. I'm here to tell you that he made it. I'm here to tell you that he's here. And we thank him, we thank him for being here. Um, again, uh, my name is Janine. I'm not here to drive. I'm just here to make sure we stay in the right lane. That's all. That's all. All right. Um, we will start with um, scripture by Sister uh, Keita Glover. And hopefully by that time, we'll have somebody in the pulpit that can do a, a prayer for us. But um, Sister Keita Glover, if you would like to come and start us off with scripture, please. All right, this is one of those times when we had to let Jesus do the driving. Because right. <laughs> I was just told that this was what I was doing. So I have chosen the scriptures about the gatekeepers. So if you would follow along in your Bibles with me. We're going to come from 1 Chronicles, 9th chapter the 22nd through the 27th verses. Oh, thank you, Chris. That just means I need to go get my glasses so I can read from up there. <laughs> so God gave me some extra eyes. I don't have to read that small font, okay? All these which were chosen to be porters in the gates were 212. These were reckoned by their genealogy in the villages whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office. So they and their children had oversight of the gates of the house of the Lord, namely the house of the tabernacle by wards. In four quarters were the porters toward the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren, which were in their villages, were to come after seven days from time to time with them. For these Levites and four chief porters were in their set office and were over the chambers and treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged around about the house of God because a charge was upon them, and the opening thereof every morning pertained to them. Lord, add a blessing to the reading of this word. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on this Sunday afternoon, Father God. Still knowing, Father God, you're a great supplier, a great deliverer, a God who is worthy to be praised, no matter what condition that we're in. Yes. But on this grand day, dear Heavenly Father, you have allowed all of us to come together, Father God, yes. to call upon your holy and righteous name, yes. just to celebrate this anniversary, dear Lord, of ushers, dear Lord, a service in the church, dear Heavenly Father. Yes. Father, it's amazing what you have done yes. and what you are still doing, Father yes. God. Not only in this church, the Heavenly Father, but in our lives as well, Father God. 
You are a God who is worthy to be served. That's why you have service in the church, the Heavenly Father. To take care of those who can't take care of themselves, the Heavenly Father. But sometimes, Father God, the people book. They say things back to the usher that shouldn't be said. But they're just trying to do their job, the Heavenly Father. To bring glory to your name and honor to your household, Father God. So we praise you, Father God, for just allowing us to have service in the church, dear Lord. To organize. To make people just a little bit more comfortable, dear Lord, while they're in service. To help the little children when they need to be helped, Father God. To aid those in any way that needs to be done, Father God. Just like you, Father God. Every time something goes on in our lives, Father God, you're always sending someone by. A phone call to Heavenly Father. Just to feel your presence, Father God, when things get a little, a little rough. So, Father God, on this anniversary, dear Lord, I ask of you, Father God, to touch each and every usher in this church, dear Lord. Because I know they get tired of standing on the doorstep from time, dear Lord. They get tired sometimes, Father God, just, just helping others out, dear Heavenly Father. Just lay your hands upon them, Father God. Let them know, Father God, they're not alone and they're doing a great service. Let them know, Father God, that every step they have taken on this journey, you're right there with them, Father. So, Father, again, bless them, use them, protect them, prop them up, Father God, wherever they're leaning. Let them know, Father God, without a shadow of a doubt, in your word you say you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we thank you for this grand day. We thank you for the ones who came to celebrate this anniversary, Heavenly Father. I'm just praying, Father God, that your will is being done. I pray in your holy and righteous name. Amen. Kita Glover for that scripture. You know, a part of that scripture read, a charge was given unto them. It said a charge was given unto Amen. them. When a charge is given, sometimes flesh don't feel like it. Sometimes you feel like it's no reason to smile. But when a charge is given, you do it anyway. It ain't about those around you. So we thank our Barbers Creek ushers. We thank all the ushers here today for for obeying that charge. All right. All right. We'd also like to thank Minister uh, Jackson for that awesome prayer. Next, we will have a welcome from Sister Terry Johnson following the introduction of ushers by Sister Mamie Kenny. Greetings from our church, Barbers Creek, and our members. We appreciate you coming by to visit with us. We also have a church every Sunday, and we are welcoming you to come. Uh, it hadn't been easy for us, but we are patient and we are kind, and we understand your needs as well as you understand ours. Amen. And we appreciate you coming by and visiting with us. Amen. Good evening, good morning, and how y'all do? <laughs> Before I introduce my Urshul's friend, did everybody, did anybody not get anything to eat? You didn't get anything to eat? Well, we still got some stuff back there, we can get some food. Okay, did everybody get enough to eat? 
Okay, then we all set to go. I would like to introduce my Ursher's friends. I mean, I've been on Ursher Boat for a long time. Amen. I think longer than most of them here, except for Sister Lily Pale, and that's our secret. The first I would like to say, uh, I'm glad to have y'all here, and I'm glad y'all came. And it's been a long time since I've been here because of my job and family members, and but right now, I got a chance to come back, and I'm glad I did. The first I want to introduce you to my brother, Lindsey Jack. We were baptized at the same time. So he's been on there a long time. Amen. And you know me, Mamie. Sister Bernice Jackson. Sister Allison Shields. Sister Terry Johnson. Sister Ruth Hale. Sister Gloria Arnold. Brother Vance Thurman. Sister Keita Glover, Sister Virginia Smith, and our honorary members, Sister Marzell Barnes, who's not here, she's ill, and Sister Ruby Smith. These are our ushers, and please be nice to them when you come in. Thank you. <laughs> See, everybody know Ruby. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'd like to uh, thank Sister Terry Johnson and Sister Mamie Kenny for their part in this program. Uh, to our musicians. I want you to play until somebody nod for you to stop, okay? The so soft music is, is fine. Um, we have come to the part of our program where we will be doing a memorial dedication. Um, I'm asking all the ushers and the few that I talked to to please um, proceed to the back. Any ministers in the audience? Amen. If there are any ministers in the audience, would they like to come to the pulpit? Amen. 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 I'm good. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. All right, we've we've come to the portion of our program where we are doing a dedication. As these ushers and church members come, we'd like to take this moment to remember our dear uh, sweet member, Pauline. And the poem goes, a light went out on earth for us. The day we said goodbye. And on that day, a star was born the brightest in the sky. Reaching through the darkness with its rays of purest white, lighting up the heavens as she once lit up our life. With beams of love to heal the broken hearts you left behind, where always in our memory, your lovely star will shine. And as these members and ushers came forward, what they're putting by Sister Pauline's picture is a star. Although we'll never see her on this side again, okay. I remember David saying, 
I'll never see him on this side. But one day, one day, we'll meet again. Thank you. You all may have a seat. Thank you. Now I want you all to get ready for our ushers march. Um, if you look at your programs, you'll know what you are responsible for following the financial appeal. So we need for our deacons to get ready again. Thank you. that the ushers come first. This is only a, a few times that you guys are gonna be able to come first. So all ushers, please stand and get ready to walk around.
Let us pray. All wise. Mighty God. Yes. Yes, Lord. It's one more time we come before you. We come just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for each and every usher in this building. Yes, Lord. Especially put your long arm protection around them, uh-huh. around Barbara's Creek ushers. Yes, yeah, Master, we have lost an usher since the last time we come together. Uh-huh. Yes, Lord. But, Master, we realize that one day all of us are going to depart this busy walk of life. Uh-huh. But, Master, we stand to say thank you for these offers that have been taken up in your name. And we pray that you bless everyone that gave and everyone that had not to give. And then, Master, we pray that they be used for the purpose in which they were taken up for. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. everybody for their part. Um, introduction of our guest minister looks like it would be from Pastor David. Now it has selection guest choir. So I guess we got to guess who that guest <laughs> choir is. Tabernacle. Tabernacle. What you usually do to make a move, uh, Reverend Cooper? introduction of our guest minister from uh, Barbers Creek's very own Pastor David. We will have a selection from the choir and after that you will hear the proclaimed word Amen. from Reverend Kenneth Cooper. Hey. Let every heart say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Let me hear it say it one more time. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. We thank God for an opportunity to introduce a young man that I've been knowing even before he started proclaiming God's word from the backs of the pulpit. Amen. He came here with him and my wife was working together at that time, and he came to visit us. And she had told me he was going to be a preacher, so I called him to the pulpit even before he had preached his first sermon. Amen. So we thank God for that. And and he's been standing proclaiming the word, amen, ever since. And he's a young man that, as the old folks say, he can preach, he will preach, and if he don't preach, he's going to deal with me. Amen. So we thank God for Reverend Cooper. We thank God for his church family coming along with us, and we thank God for them, amen, for the choir and their members. And, but we ask that you would be pray for him and pray with him as he come to proclaim God's word. Amen. Because, you know, all of us need a little help here once in a while. Amen. And I believe every time you say amen, it's just like saying sick him to a dog. <laughs> amen. So, oh, so we ask for your amens as he come before us. Amen. God bless you.
is our God. Hallelujah. <laughs> How great is our God. We greet you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, to one of God's greatest mentors and pastors, daddy, brother, and friend, Pastor Jerry David. Can we give God praise for him? Amen. And you think, can't thank God for the pastor without thanking God for the lady that's with the pastor. Yeah. Lady David, amen. She went from my friend and sister to my mama, amen. <laughs> amen. Thank God for him, amen, and her. Thank God for the Barbers Creek Baptist Church. Can you give God praise for yourselves, Barbers Creek? Thank God for these wonderful ushers, amen. 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 Come on, you got to do a little bit better than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Kenny. Amen. Miss Ruby, I remember years ago, we had a talk right in front of your house. And that was during my valley experience. And I've been climbing up ever since. Thank you for that conversation. You probably don't even remember that conversation, but thank you. Amen. You never know who God puts in your path to encourage you during times of discouragement. To our presider today, Lady Rogers, amen. Amen. Come on, y'all could do better than that, amen. To these ministers of the gospel, amen. Our sons in the ministry, Pastor Sharp, surprised me today. I looked down the hall and seen this guy. Now you look, it's not he, it's him, amen. Thank God for Pastor Sharp. Pastor David, one of the hardest days in my life was when he told me God called him to pastor. To start a church, I wanted to tell him, Negro, don't you leave me. But I couldn't do that, amen. I had let him go. He has always been a faithful son in the ministry. Amen. Thank God for Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church Incorporation. Amen. Church on the hill. Amen. 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 Thank God for you. Thank God for the officers of this church. I'm not going to trouble you long. I want to invite you with me. I preach this sermon many times, but God gave me a different angle today. I want to come from 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Thank God for all of you today, my Heavenly Father's children. Amen. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm going to read from the Message Bible today. It sounds different, but it is the same. All right. These words are recorded in chapter 4, verse 1. One day, the wife of a man from the guile of prophets called out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You well know what a good man he was, devoted to God, and now the man to whom he was in debt is on his way to collect by taking my two children as slaves. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we come now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in humble submission to your will to preach the gospel. It is our prayer that you prepare us to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. 
Open up our intellect. Make us fertile ground. Father, we need a word from you. Let it be less of Cooper and more of you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. I decree and I declare for a rhyme of word to fall fresh in this place. As we celebrate this usher's ministry, we give you glory because without you, there is no ministry. So in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we ask now that you allow the words of our mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in our sight. Oh Lord, you are strength and our redeemer. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the saints of God shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As you're going to your seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's talk from this thought. Standing on a solid foundation. Amen. Standing on a solid foundation. The gospel, Pastor David, records that there was a man that built a house. And it built it on sand. But it didn't last long. Because the sand can't hold a solid foundation. There was a man that built and the grass grew up. And overtook the foundation. Because he didn't build on a solid foundation. There are people that are building, but not building on a solid foundation. Feel as there are people trying to build on what other folks say, but what other folks are saying can't be trusted. You got to be careful who you let speak into your ears. Because some folks are speaking to make themselves look good. But I found out that folk can look good on the outside but be ruined on the inside. If you pay attention to folk, they can talk good for a minute but after about an hour, they don't talk like they used to. After you get to know somebody, you find out that the first impression may have been a good impression, but it wasn't the best impression. It's amazing that even in church, folk will fake it and pretend they're trying to make it. But here today we find out that there is a woman who has a bit of a problem. Can I get a witness? She has a bit of a problem because Prophet Smith, she's been living a good life. But she's been living off of borrowed time. She's been having her needs met only because her husband was a borrower. But what got me, Pastor David, he is a man of God. But yet he's a borrower. The Bible says that we should be the lender and not the borrower. But it says we should be. It didn't say we are. And I've learned something. If you're going to borrow something, you ought to pay it back. I think I need to park right there for a second. If you're going to borrow, pay it back. If you can't pay it back, don't act like a stranger. There are folk that will borrow from you and try to make you look like you're the bad person. Honey, you owe me. I don't owe you. Don't take me down. Don't take me down. 
You owe me. You came to me. I didn't come to you and ask you, do you need to borrow? You came to me and said, can I borrow? So it's only right that you come back and say, I need to pay you. I shouldn't have to call you to tell you that you owe me. Can I get a witness? And that's relevant for the church because after all that God has done for us, can you take me back? Can you take me back? After all that God has done for us, the least we can do is come to his house and bless his name. So here it is. This woman who had been living off of her husband's borrower. Now, her husband is dead. And the man that her husband owed comes to her house and tells her, you need to take care of your husband's debt. Now, I'm glad that's not in 2024. Because it arises in 2024. They would have said, that's his debt. That's between you and him. But not doing biblical history. Because if your house borrowed, your house had to pay back. There must be a lot of folks in debt in here. Y'all didn't say that. So because her husband is dead, she now hears sounds of desperation. She's desperate because she knows she got to pay him back. But she knows she's broke. What do you do when you're broke? And the payment is due. She can't borrow from nobody else. Because during that day and time, your name was put up when you borrowed. So you couldn't borrow no more. During this day and time, your name is put in a system. And the system says that your debt is overdue. So your borrowing power is now limited to what you can get. She can't borrow to pay Peter because she owed Paul. Peter knows that she owes Paul. So Peter tells Paul don't let her borrow from you because she still owe me. Let me fix it up in the funeral home business. Folk won't use this funeral home when daddy died because they still hadn't paid that funeral home from when mama died. So they go around town talking about the funeral home they owe. Tell me they didn't do this, they didn't do that, but they don't tell you didn't pay us. So, so Tom, she owed this man. She's desperate, but she's also devastated. She's devastated because her husband is dead. She's desperate because she got to pay the debt. All right, all right. She's in despair because yes, yes. she don't have no money. All right, all right. She's desperate because she's in debt. Right. She's devastated right. because her husband is dead. All right, all right. But she's in despair uh -huh. because she's broke. All right, all right. The creditor says, I got a deal for you. Uh -huh. We can work it off. Yeah. He says, you can let your two sons yeah. come work for me. Yeah. Be my slaves yeah. until the debt is paid. All right. All right. She's already desperate. Yeah. 
She's already devastated. Now she's in despair because she's lost her husband. Now she's about to lose her son. But her husband is not coming back. But her sons can go to work and when it's paid off, they can come back. So she has a fixable problem. But she's frustrated because she don't have means of income. And she thinks about what do I do to keep from losing my children? I ain't going to be long. Can I get a witness? So she says, if my husband trusted Pastor David, then I need to talk to the pastor to get an idea of how to take care of my problem. Calls Elisha. Elisha comes to the house. Elisha says, what, what, what is it? What you want me to do for you? He has a question of purpose. He said, you done called me over here. What you want with me? What can I do for you? She said, well, let me tell you what's going on. You already know my husband died because you preached his funeral. Can I get a witness? But you didn't know that when he died, he was in debt. And now the debt is due. And I got to pay for it. And I ain't got no money. And they're threatening to take my children. And I don't want to lose my children. Because I've already lost my husband. And if I lose my children, I'll be in this house all by myself. And if I'm all by myself, I'm vulnerable to other thieves. So my boys keep me protected. So what can I do to pay my debt and keep my protection? I'm preaching, but y'all ain't saying that. The man of God says, well, you have a question of purpose, but I got a question of possession. What do you have in your house? He says, all I have is a pot of oil. He said, that's all I got. And that all ain't nothing to me. I'd rather get all the way to get my children. Well, can, I just, can I just play with the text a little bit? She said, I'd rather lose the all than lose my children. And he said, well, I got something for you. Since you are desperate, since you are devastated, since you are in despair, since you have a question of purpose, and my question is a, a possession, I got a quarter promise. I'm almost done. Now. And the quarter promise is if you use what you got and if you get what you need. I'm going to drop this in here. It's a little bit out of line. But I learned the hard way. What you got in your house it's better than what's outside your house. I'm going. I might not get to come back, but I'm going this time. Can I get a witness? If you've been with one, you've been with the rest. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Because they all got the same thing. One is just in the house. One is outside the house. One wants to get what you got in the house that you're giving to the one in the house. To get it on the outside of the house. I got some folk that know what I'm talking about. And I can't afford to pay the bills in my house and your house too. I ain't talking about nobody. And if the truth be told, Poplar Spring, I'm already a little bit stingy when it comes to stuff outside of church. I don't mind putting my money in church because I know I'm going to get a return. But some of y'all, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. But before I move, I'm going to say this. That little bit of time that you want to give, just ain't worth it. Yeah. 
And I don't mean to put my business out there. I'm going to move. He says, what do you have in your house? All I got is a pot of oil. Didn't Chris? Said, that's all I got. He says, well, in order to fix what's wrong, you got to get your boys to participate for your miracle. Auntie said, you got to get your boys to participate for your miracle. Somebody said, for your miracle. If you want a miracle, in your house, you need full house participation. The reason our churches can't get blessed is because you're trying to create your own vision and not follow the pastor's vision. Okay, okay, let me drop this in here. I ain't trying to get in your business. But this morning I preached and I came from the text where they were talking about Peter and John. Said there was ignorant and unlearned men, but they had been with Jesus. You better be careful who you talking about I can't read and write. Because there are some folk that been with Jesus that can't spell but can tell you how to get out of debt. And I've been preaching for a long time. Now, not long past day, but I've preached for a long time. And I found out that there are some preachers that have doctorate degrees in theology that can't preach their way out of a wet paper bag. But there are some preachers that didn't finish the eighth grade that can preach the horns off a of billy goat. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Why? Because the preacher that don't have education have been with Jesus. Bible says that he tells her you need to change your scenery. Get your boys to go out into the sub. I'm sorry. Get your boys to go to Wanda, to Glenwood. I'm sorry. Get your boys to go to Athens, to Nellie B. I'm sorry. Get your boys to go to Monroe, to King Street. I'm sorry. Get your boys to go out to the neighbor's house. And, 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 and borrow vessels. He said, when you borrow vessels, don't just borrow a few of them, but get as many as you can. Robert, had I been that woman, I would have said, why do you want me to get a whole lot of vessels? Because I don't have but a little pot of oil. And I can hear the Holy Spirit saying, Jesus only had two fish and five loaves of bread. But he fed 5,000. Can I get a witness? The Bible says that Moses and the children of Israel only had a rod in his hand. The children of Egypt was all behind them. And God told Moses, stretch out your rod, touch the Red Sea, and the Red Sea opened up. Can I get a witness here? The Bible says 
that Daniel was in the lion's den. And the lions were all around Daniel. But the Bible said that the Lord shut the mouth of the lion. Do I have a witness here? The Hebrew boys was in a fiery furnace. They turned the fire up seven times hotter than it already was. All I'm trying to tell you is that you ought to stand on a firm foundation. Do I have a witness here? No matter what it is that's coming your way, keep on standing on your foundation. Can you lean over and tell your neighbor, no matter what it looks like, keep on standing on a solid foundation. I heard the Bible say, when the king looked in the fire, he see four boys walking around the fire. The Bible said, he asked the question, didn't I tell y'all to put three boys in the fire? But I see four. Do I have a witness here? They were in the fire, but they were still standing on the promise of God. Can you lean over? Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, whatever you do, stand on the promise of God. Can I tell you about the promise of God? He said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Can you lean over? And tell somebody, if you hang in there, I got a fit in there. And ain't gonna be all right. Is there anybody here that's not ashamed to lean over and tell your neighbor, I got a promise for you. And we know that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. I got another promise. He says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you even until the end of time. Is there anybody here that can say, friends, walk off. Family denied me, but Jesus never left me. Can I tell you why? Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, they hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung head for you and me, he died. But early, can you say early, Sunday morning, he got up with all, all power in his hand. Is there anybody here that know he got power? If you know he got power, let me hear you. Say yeah. Say yeah. All power is in his hand. Whatever you're going through, hang on in there. Because I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Can you lean over and say, neighbor, if your money is low, it's going to be all right. If your friends are few, it's going to be all right. Been lied on, it's going to be all right. Been talked about, it's going to be all right. Been scandalized, it's going to be all right. Ain't he all right? Say yeah, say yeah. Oh. tried him, ain't he all right? Anybody know him, ain't he all right? Anybody talk to him, ain't he all right? Anybody walk with him, ain't he all right? Won't he take care of you? Won't he fight your battle? Won't he hold your hand? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Thank you.
Nobody there to put me out. 